Hey guys, welcome. Today I want to announce a little, little, yeah, fun project of mine, which I was doing uh, quite a bit in the last couple of days over the holidays. It's about a bridge constructing tool. Well, it's rather a game. Um, let me show you what I mean. And first of all, let's turn the screen on. Right, so this is a game um, called Bridge Constructor. And the goal is to construct a bridge, right, from one end to the other. And uh, I should maybe include my camera on the screen as well. So, little engineer here, um, big bridge here. Well, in fact, right now there's not, not a bridge. But um, yeah, we will come to that. So. Your goal is to construct a bridge and you have some hints on the first level. Um, full disclaimer, this is a bridge constructing game I bought on Steam, which is called Bridge Constructor. And well, backstory of this is um, we thought, so my brother and I thought about a nice Christmas present for my dad. And he likes to play such uh, things. And for, of course, the question comes like, yeah, you're the engineer, so how to build a bridge. And well, it's kind of kind of funny. I really played a little bit about, with this. Um, so we will do the, the very easy one. So there, for, let me back up a little bit. So this is not a, um, this is not a, just a gaming uh, video, right? This will not be a let's play channel and I want to just do uh, bridge constructing videos, but this will, would be fun as well to just see um, what would be a good bridge and what not. Mm, well, it's actually like this a little bit, but mm, the thing is, the main thought is how can we apply this problem translate it into a, a finite element problem and solve it and optimize for it. So, and this will be a longer journey. So this is just an announcement video and the first stage or first setup. And I will work on this and uh, post updates on here and also take, um, gladly I will take some, some hints and comments uh, from you guys to improve it. So it will be, yeah, I think to, to explore together also. So. All right, so back to it. Um, well, you can come up with pretty, uh, pretty complicated bridges and um, there's different ways of materials. And um, of course, having a engineering degree helps, but it does not for, at least for me, it, it not, does not make me a genius in it. So I, it's just not like this that I know every solution right from the beginning and no bridge ever fails when I build it. Well, it's rather the op opposite. I, I like to try new things out and um, see where it fails and then improve it. I think this will also be a good learning experience. But yeah, so main focus, I'm deviating. Um, the main focus is I want to build a script and this script should take an input, which is similar to this uh, problem, and transform it into a hypermesh FEM model, solving that and giving you a proposal how the bridge should look like. And at first this may should look not that complicated, but um, considering it, um, the evaluation metric for a bridge like this, is rather not so easy because, for example, you cannot build stuff like this because, and you you would have to have a uh, a place where the trucks and cars go, so like a lane, driving lane, and if you have an inclination angle higher than this, lower than this, it will not be a um, driving lane. And um, there's a lot of different things. And that's why we start easy on that one. So first level, you see it, uh, mechanics works like this. You can construct it and um, the, um, the, the range on how long your elements of construction can be is limited. You see, it cannot be 
just going from one point to the other, which you would want. But that's not possible. So you have at least two elements. So this would be the trivial solution. And if you do it like this, you see the bearing here uh, cannot translate moments. So no bending moments here. It will just go down. It's like just a bearing. And this also formulates the problem that those are rods rather than beams. The difference between is that beams can withstand bending moments and rods cannot. Rods, rods only can carry tensile and compression forces where bending moments or bending forces, shear forces, um, they're just happening with beams. And as this is constructed here, you cannot make a set of beams without any bearing between those. And because there's a bearing which a free degree, uh, degree of freedom, rotational law, uh, a free <laughs> rotational degree of freedom, those are rods. Yeah, just your typical framework, technical mechanics or structural mechanics 101. And if you follow this uh, instruction here, you can see what this is doing. Um, this will hold, right? But is there a better solution? Better means here less budget. And there is, in fact, uh, so you could, for example, just let you see the process. Oh, that was one too, too much. So you can run a truck across it. It's not so uh, obvious here, but uh, structures, structures which show a high stress will show in a different color. They will become red and redder and redder. Um, so, right, you can change, for example, the height. And this is less material and still works. So you can improve. And the best solution I found is to just deviate from that proposal and just make one and combine that two nodes together. So I think this was the best solution I found. Not um, using any glitches or something like that. It's unfortunate in this, um, in this game you cannot see um, the bridges done by other users, which is a little bit unfortunate. There's another software which is called, I think, Polybridge 2. Polybridge 2. Maybe we will explore that um, also in another video, because there you can see that. And you see there is uh, lots of usage of glitches in the software, and, but we want to get a little bit more um, design knowledge. So this is our goal. All right, um, yeah, so this is the problem. And the way how to address it, I thought it would be best because you see you have a 2D grid here, points, and you can make uh, several elements. What if we just would solve uh, the problem by just doing something like this? And now you see my budget is um, full, but Let's imagine you put a lot of different beams and or rods, I should say, and then select the ones which are important via a topology optimization, which is more or less the thing I do most on this channel. So I thought about this a little bit and also the community question I posed a little bit earlier in the last year um, showed me that you would like to have more tutorials in Hypermesh and also a little bit of uh, Python programming for engineers. And I thought that would be a good idea to just to just do that. And um, by no means this is a perfect solution. And also the Python programming is rather um, down to earth and uh, pretty damn untidy and uh, quick and dirty. But um, we will see and improve this uh, in the future. And also I will happily uh, implement your comments on that. I will post this on GitHub, and then we can have an open discussions and also maybe forks or um, yeah, whatever. We will see about that. So today 
This is a problem set up and I just wanted to show you what I'm working on and the current stage. So what I'm showing you here is my Visual Studio code. And um, yeah, I think the camera doesn't hurt too much, right? But yeah, you can see here I have uh, three classes. Hypermesh Starter, Mesh and Script Builder. And it's pretty, pretty quick and dirty, really. Um, let me walk you through the three classes. So the mesh.py is more or less um, the main class. This has a main method and um, executes a number of settings. I should pack those variables in another class and tidy up a little bit, but let's stick with that uh, for the moment. So we have a length, height and spacing. What this does, it wants to reflect what we have here. So if you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just a finer grid. So eight, eight, sixteen. And I just would want it to have this modeled here. So this also here. So it's a sixteen by sixteen grid. And the spacing would be one point two five. I'm not sure what is this. I think yeah. So sixteen times one point two five and yeah, uh, I'm lazy. Sixteen I think it's twenty. Yeah. It is. It's 20. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty easy. So 20, that means the length of the bridge is 20. I think this is also done here. Let's see here. The first bridge, 20 meters. Oh, yeah. This is the first thing I... I'm not sure about. We should work with millimeters. Because unit-wise, this will get haywire. All right, so um, I will change that right here. So 1.25 meters, so 1.250 millimeters. And now we have a neighbor distance threshold. I will explain that in a minute. Um, and we have then the initialization of this class mesh. The mesh will get initialized with length, height, and spacing. So length, height, spacing should be um, clear. And we also can black out zones, which means we delete something like that because uh, we, we de delete rods because maybe you have something like this where a part of the grid is not available for um, building constructions. Yeah, so you don't have that area, so you cut it out. So just delete those elements. Uh, but we don't have that here right now, so easy for us. So we have no nothing with blackout here. And it's also a pretty bad name. Yeah. All right, and then we have a script builder. The script builder is used to just um, combine all the TCL methods. And it is compiling a list of TCL commands, which, which will get then sent to Hypermesh. So um, I will just show that to you here. So this is the script builder class. It has different methods and those are not well documented. I sh yeah, shame on me here. But uh, you initialize a script builder instance here with having a TCL command and then matrix. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's even... That's also not good. That's not good. I'm sorry, um, I will edit that here on the fly. Um, so what I want to here do here is that we have uh, the parameters of the mesh available to us and um, therefore I have to transfer a mesh instance here and give it here and then we can have this removed so this is not longer necessary and mesh becomes self.mesh and I think maybe there's another Occurrence of this type of thing. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Here. I don't want to have that. We can have just self.mesh. It's just for uh, a little bit um, tidier. And um, because I did that, the matrix 
which I usually or I used to transfer here should also be there's something where it is called self.matrix and that's not longer existent anymore so it's self.mesh.matrix this will all get clear I hope in a little bit all right um is there any self.matrix any matrix self.matrix should have used replace command all right right that's good so we can get rid of that but we now have to have a mesh instance all right so as you see here in the main class mesh which i should rename at some point um a mesh will get transferred here at the initialization so this is not longer needed anymore and in the first in the first line of code here just a script builder instance will get initialized right here and the tcl commands is just a list of tcl commands a string list and hypermesh starter will initialize that so as i told you before we have three files right now it will be more in the future but we have mesh which is the main class script builder which uh, just a compilation of our mesh uh, our tcl methods and then we have hypermesh starter let's just quickly cover the hypermesh starter that's an easy one Hypermesh start is used for uh, starting the binary executable of Hypermesh. And um, doing that, also transferring a TCL file, which has the commands. So Hypermesh starter has some variables, class variables like Altair Home and Puff Hypermesh. And it's not really... Yeah, I think we can get rid of this method. So we have an initialized uh, TCL lines. I'm not liking that either. Let's rephrase that to initialize TCL commands. Commands. So TCL commands is an empty list. I plan to have some initial lines here, like clear a new model, for example, and um, use a user profile, which we can maybe use as a parameter here, but for now it's empty. That's just returning an empty list. And um, just that I do that here, initialize TCL commands. So this is done. And then we have just a method here, which is called run hypermesh. And this run hypermesh method, will use um, just a basic process starter going into the Altair home directory into the path hypermesh and then just running this either in batch mode or not and transmitting also a TCL file over this TCL flag that's running just a process. We will see that in a minute how this works. So hypermesh start is just that what's yeah the file name says it's just starting hypermesh. And this TCL uh, file gets built up by the methods in script builder. And so going back, we have initialized a script builder class here, or instance, I should say. So yeah, I'm not going into the programming details. If you want more of that stuff, please leave a comment and I will happily discuss what an instance and the class is and how they are related to each other. But for right now, I will just um, assume that you know that already or don't care. <laughs> all right um so the instance script builder will then get used to execute different methods so for example here first method is write tcl create nodes this will just set up the grid and put for each and every um you know what actually we can make it um bit by bit if i I delete this. So we have chest commands which are valid. 
And I will just comment out all of that. So we have, that's the most easy part here. Initialize a script builder class, we write TCL create nodes. So this is the first method. And this will just uh, create the nodes. And we will see what this do, uh, what this does. So script builder write, his, uh, write script and run is writing out a TCL file and executing it by using the hypermesh starter class. Up this clear. All right, so let's just run it. Ooh, all right, we have a self.matrix, still some left. This is because of the edit. All right, now it should work. All right. I have a print command in here somewhere. Yeah, don't need that anymore. Okay, you cannot see it right here at the moment because it's wrongly scaled on my screen. But now you can see it. Switch to that one. And uh, what do we have here is a model which has nodes in it, which I cannot see. Uh, strange. Where are the nodes? Okay, it was just building up. <laughs> ah, there was one node. I think it's in the X set is zero. So this should work. The F command is not working, but um, there are nodes here. Okay, let me see if I... I think I have a visual visualization problem here. So we have 289 nodes here. Which I cannot see and the F key is not working right now. Unfortunately. Okay, ah, uh, there was one node. Let me see if I can, ah, uh, you. <laughs> it's a bit tricky here. All right, now I'm zooming out, oh boy. Okay, high enough, you can see that. Let me just quickly make another node. It's really strange that you cannot see it. This used to work. So somewhere here are nodes. <laughs> and, ah, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. The problem is the spacing. Because we made such a lot of space, spacing, and those nodes are hugely apart from each other. Uh, let's, for the sake of showing that, I think it's a little bit stupid with me jumping around here. I will leave it here. It's not that important. Um, let's change the this, uh, this script uh, spacing. Spacing, I'm sorry. Spacing to 1.25. We can scale it up later. And see again if you can see it. So that you get an idea of what this is doing. Um, <clears throat> while this is starting up, I can tell you about the next things which are happening here. So. After that, rods are created. So from each point to each point in a distance threshold, a rod is um, created. So now you can see it, right? So this is just a grid. And um, comparing that to the bridge problem, we are covering an area from here to here, to here, to here. So our bridge will be in the middle. Okay. All right. Um, now let's skip the introductionary talking and uh, show you the real deal. So I will just basically uncomment everything here. 
and walk you through it. So this is creating um, the rods. And you see there's this neighbor distance threshold. So three times spacing is the max length of a beam. So let me show that here. So I will connect each and every point until three times spacing. So considering that point, this will get connected, this will get connected, this will get connected, and this I'm not sure. No, I don't think this will get connected. And same, same for the bottom. Cannot show that to you. And that's for each point. So you have a lot of duplicate. Now duplicate elements you don't have because I, I worked around it. But so if you have, for example, you're at this node and creating this element and then you're on this node and wanted to create this element, this will get skipped because we don't have duplicate elements. But I think you have um, an element from here to here, but an element from here to here as well. And I'm not sure if that's a smart idea. But yeah, we, it's beginning stage. So let's see. Um, this is creating the rods. And then we have some SPC node IDs. This is just a variable for me. And um, that's making uh, SPCs fixating points at the start at the, at the end of the beam uh, of the bridge. And there are also concerns about that. If I should let a one degree of freedom free, I should do it, right? I think so. And what degree of freedom would that be? There would be a turning around set direction. That would be this one. And I think, um, I think this is the correct one to do it. It's not here, so there should be a documentation thing. Ah, here it is. Six nines. Yeah, okay. And then the loads. Well, there's also some doubts I had because, yeah, I will not go into it that much, but we will do a simple thing here. We do a load at the middle, which would be at eight. Yeah, so we can delete this. What this is what this is doing, it um, creates a list of IDs. So each node has an ID, and the ID from the middle is the one which y and x is eight and eight. So at the coordinates eight eight, um, you have this. Um, yeah, you have this ID. So mesh.ids, this is the table where the IDs are, and then going to one particular location. Yeah, and I made it like this in this um, list comprehension format is because, uh, for example, for the SPC IDs, I want to have two points. So you see for Y, X in zip, so putting two things together, 8, 8 and 0 and length, you're going to 0 0.8 x0 and 8 is y, so this is that point, because 0 in x and y is 8, because origin is here, and length dot 8 would be length and 8 up, so you're here, and that's y. Um, yeah, all right, then what else? Uh, so we have SPC nodes, and you putting your SPC here, so list of SPC nodes, and here is the constraints you want to um, define there. So here everything is hold zero, but the degree um, set rotation. So this is why I put it to 999999. Nine, 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 nine. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if that has to be minus, but I think it had to be. I will see that. And then we have the same thing with the load thing. And for the loads, we want to have the list of node IDs and then the direction of force. And I think it was zero dot spacing dot zero. I just put in the amount of Newtons in spacing because I wanted to relate that. 
yeah. And then some just basic things. Uh, load step creation does not have any input parameters. It just um, puts in some load step. And then we have the basic top op min mass. Um, yeah, there's two ways of doing that. So optimization for minimum compliance by giving a volume frag will tend to have different structures from um, optimizing for min mass, but um, applying a constraint for the displacement, for the maximum displacements you want to allow. And then you write your script and run. This is just um, executing the script. So, whoops. Write script and run. This should definitely be at the bottom and this should be more up. I think that's one of the first things we want to have here. Yeah. I'm sorry about this, uh, but it's just me tidying up a little bit. All right. Now, um, so as I said, it will just uh, start the routine as you s saw before. Then I think, oh, uh, let's put it to a test, right? See what it does. Um, as it's symmetrical, I'm not really worrying about the direction of the force here. So now it's positive. I think it's rather intuitive to have it negative, but yeah. All right. Ooh, all right. Uh, right T cell rods has too many arguments. Yeah, I think the mesh is not longer needed. Yes, the mesh is not longer needed. Also because of my um, refactoring from before. Not worked again. Still, still my stupid um, print. So. To print here? No. All right. So it will take a little bit longer because it has to create a little bit more of elements. On model, you can see the increasing count of elements. And also, I can show you the TCL commands which are produced here. See here. This is the file we are creating and then sending them uh, this file to Hypermesh. And there you can also guess the number of elements, for example. So it's in the 3000 range, something. This can get big really pretty damn fast because you're uh, with the threshold, you're doing a lot of elements. So we have done that. And now, uh, okay. So this is the, the spacing, a little spacing here, but yeah, don't care at the moment. And then I will just run that and see if that works. Let's put that to test. Oh, I think I have that already. All right, just run it. And maybe not double run it, but this will have a Fortran error at one instance. Yeah. So, um, yeah, did I talk about optimization? So min mass and you have a displacement constraint. So you constrain the node where there is a force acting. So this should not displace greater than a uh, specific amount. And there lies the problem to the whole thing because you have to know what range of displacement constraints you would have to apply. And um, yeah, there, there are many, 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 many problem areas. So what this will do right now is it will just limit the displacements of this single node, basically constructing an X around it. So a top uh, hinge and then um, doing something like that. So with an X. But mm, that's not really what you want, right? So nowhere in this optimization problem, you can find something that you want to have a driving lane, which goes from one point to the other. So this is the thing I want to, and if it has to be straight, it's not also not set by the problem. 
but let's let's see um before we um criticize the optimization setup uh, let's see what the optimization gives us so this is um, the output for the last iteration something like this and if i do the iso value you will see the problem i told you earlier so it seems that those things disappear and that's really strange because why would this blue line exist but this is rather coming from that you have double elements here and you can see that if you hovering see that blinking that's because you see this element which is also present here but you also see this blue element you go really down and this is rather strange here because <laughs> then you have um yeah, this varies. It's a bit strange. Maybe we should do no averaging. Yeah, that's largely better. All right, so here you have it. Bridge. Um, yeah, I'm not convinced. And neither should you be. But yeah, it's a problematic of the setup. So what I thought, and this is the stage I'm currently at. So this is the first part of this or second part of this video. Now coming to a little bit of a discussion. Um, I was thinking about moving forward in the direction of just using the assumption you have a straight, um, a straight connection of the driving, li driving lane, but you have to define the maximum beam length. So for example, if I would have defined that the maximum beam length would be free, then I would go and make a driving length like this. And this would be set. And every point in between is a bearing. So for the viewer here, it's obvious that this is not really the best solution, but it's not even symmetric, right? So we would move this here. But how does the computer know that? So maybe that's a division problem. But let's assume we have this, and this is fixed. So you would assume that those beams, beams, I think beams is, no, rods, we will use rods, have a different property and will be set no matter what. And it has to have a min mass of the whole setup, which it builds around that. Yeah, just doing something like this. Um, this would not even be possible, right? But for the sake of, of a simplification, I'm leaving that right now. So, minimize the mass of the construction around it, but also having a displacement constraint on every point on the driving line, because there are the points where uh, forces are acting. So this is one way of thinking, or one way of an idea where I want to go with that. So this is one way to explore it. The other way I thought would be just to use gravitation. But then you have a problem with the optimization because min mass and deflection constraints will not ha help you. Because the trivial solution would be to just ignore everything and just make nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing, nothing. Mass is zero and gravitational, well, no displacements because you don't have any elements. So this brings me to the to the thought of maybe defining some mass point where you want to um, limit the deflection. Well, yeah, that's that's the stage where I'm at. So this is just me presenting the problem or the the fun project I'm working on right now. And I'm very open and happy for comments and I will keep you updated uh, with the post. And I will also make sure to link a GitHub repository where you can comment on all my quick and dirty code uh, mess ups and um, maybe make some comments about how to improve or even just make some suggestions on how to maybe also uh, go in a different direction than I what I was uh, thinking of. All right, um, to wrap this up, thank you very much uh, for this, uh, yeah, for watching here and uh, being with me here on this video and I will hope 
I, I hope you will come back to this series in the future and maybe have learned a thing or two with, with me on this journey. And as always, um, thank you very much for being here. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Hope you liked it and uh, see you next time.